Hello and welcome to episode 158 and uh, for this video I've come down to a new venue for me the venue isn't new but it's new for me uh, and that is uh, Broadlands Lake uh, down in sort of Hampshire sort of near Southampton way um, as you can see joined by uh, Keith and tomorrow we'll also be joined by Ginge but he had to work late so he couldn't get down tonight it is a uh, late in the evening we both had to work to ourselves today so uh, we're quite late in getting here ourselves in the day it's actually sort of early well late evening early night time now yeah. and uh, and anyway so basically we've got here we've done a lap of the lake had a bit of a mooch round Basically the car parks are right over that side of the car park, over the lake, and so we've come all the way over here, and uh, it seemed like the quietest part of the, the lake, because... People don't want to change Exactly, yeah. That's, that's exactly what I think this side of the lake's caught. The car parks are over that side of the lake, and people are basically fishing close to their cars, or as close as can be. Also, there, there were fish in the swim as well, come around here like... There's nobody here, there's, there's fish out there. It seems like, for the sake of lugging our kit for like 10, 15 minutes round to the far side of the lake. And, you know, we're on fish, we're not actually fishing yet. There's a, we had dinner delivered to our swim and then we've just been doing a bit of marker work and trying to get our, Find some nice spots, get our yes, spots which I have done now. So the rods aren't out yet. But anyway, it's also absolutely mega hot, guys. Absolutely melted. That sort of 10, 15 minute walk to get round this side of the lake absolutely killed yeah, us, didn't it? 15, <laughs> 25. But, but anyway, guys, right. Like I say, I need to get the rods out, so we're uh, going to stop waffling now. So until something carpy happens. And a big thanks to Jeff for borrowing his barrow. <laughs> yeah, he did bring his barrow. And Jeff down there lent me his barrow. Good <laughs> Let's lad. go fishing. Put a bit of bait out now. Uh, as you just seen, the rods have all just gone out. All three rods went out first time, lovely jovely, so I'm very happy about that. Uh, as you do when you come to a venue for the first time, like most of you, what I did is uh, I asked on Facebook for a bit of advice on um, baiting strategy, what works best, you know, what to use, not what to use. Um, I'd quite a lot of conflicting um, uh, information to be fair about like how much to put in um, some told me to fill it in some said don't put any bait in some said just put a little bait in but um, but the universal kind of information I did have from um, sort of most people was avoid particle at all costs otherwise you just get breamed out so um so for this session, so far to, I've brought some Hinders Nut 365, I've bought a bag of 10 millis and then a bag of, oh, getting a bit of interest already, only been out a few minutes. So yeah, and then, uh, and then a bag of chops. Uh, both the Hinders Nut, nut 365. So, uh, yeah, so I'm pretty much, I mean, nothing else in me bucket. So, and as probably most of you know, spot mixes can be as simple or as complicated as you like. <laughs> and, well, that is my spot mix, guys. Just, uh, 
a mix of some 10 millis and chops. I'm going to start off by just putting a couple of spawns out, not spawns, dot spots of uh, bait out over each rod to start off with. And then I'll um, judge it by ear for, for the first night just to see how it goes. So I'll start off with some of the advice that I've been given just to put out a little bit of bait. Depending on what happens then tonight, well, uh, I'll judge how much bait then I put out for tomorrow, tomorrow evening, etc. Right, let's get some of me boiling, boiling crumb in the lake. Thank you. Was you impressed with how I threaded the Yeah I've... threaded it through the eye of the needle. Got under the canopy and still tight to the uh... Oh it very impressive. It's the 20 shots you had before that mucked it up. That fluffed it up, you mean? <laughs> mucked it. You know, that tree was uh, about five foot wider. Is it, there is it. Right. Trapped to set. Right then, guys. So, that is all I'm going to do. Like I said, just a couple of spots per per rod just to uh, judge what's going to go on for the first night and then um, if there's any carpy action then I'll put some more bait in tomorrow but for now we'll leave it like that and then uh, just leave it in the hands of the carpy gods now but we're fishing finally all baited up just need to get base camp up now and it's still hot Just help you outside. 
We were just sat down having a bit of a natter, talking about rigs, tackle, all oh, stuff carpy. And the middle rod has just rattled off. This is the rod I've got tight to the far margin, tight to the island. Loosen the drag off, make it look like it's putting up a better fight. <laughs> well, I don't think it's a big in mind. It don't feel like a monster, but... Uh, now I've loosened off the drag, it's putting up a great fight. <laughs> it's definitely a car. It's not a monster. It's not going to break any TV um, personal base. Drop the lead. I don't know if you can zoom in on that. Can you? Can you? Done it. In the net. Fish in the net. That's not bad. Be fishing about an hour for the fish. Well, then, guys. So as I said, while I was playing the fish. I'd only probably had the rods out about an hour and um, the middle rod is ramped off already. As I thought while I was playing it, definitely ain't going to beat no um, PBs, but uh, we're not blanking and that's the main thing. Taking on a uh, blackjack 12mm pop-up on a Ronnie rig. So, so now we know the fish are coming. I might have to put a little bit more bait out. So, uh, yeah. Oh, £10.6 as well, by the way. So, good start. guys we're with Keith he's putting a bit of bait out and if you notice there he's using a bit of an old-fashioned spod there don't see many people using them anymore but they serve a purpose they do the job plus you're old school, old school that's right. is that because you're old there we go are you old school because you're old? <laughs> I said, are you old school because you are old? Yeah, that's it. Or is it just that you're using an old-fashioned spod because you're a tight arse and can't be bothered to buy a spawn? Yeah, that's, yeah, well, I've got a spot. <laughs> yeah, I've got a spot. Mm. Especially in that bag behind you. Oh, yeah. Just that they, they seem to let you down when you, you've, you've seen it. I've, if they've yeah. passed it, they've opened up or they've not opened yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. So I, I they're, the yield don't open on impact or open it, they're, they're about 33%, 33%, 33%. 33% they open okay. 33% they open prematurely. 33% they don't open when they hit the water. Yeah. <laughs> but the last one I was doing up that way, was casting it, it was opening in mid-air just before hitting the water. Which was quite good actually. Yeah. Well that new uh, Nash dot spot. That's all right, of, that's nice. I've not had any issues whatsoever. Right. 
So, while you're winding that in, is there any particular reason why you've decided to put some bait out? Well, last time I fished here, the first time I fished here, I was spotting Hampton corn and a few boilies over the top, and uh, lo and behold, I had 20 of them there. So I'm wondering if it needs a bit of bait to get them to come in. They've been around oh, here right. all day. Oh, I thought you might have been putting some bait out because of I just had a fish. <laughs> That's what I was getting at. <laughs> Do you want fish? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that as well. I mean, you, know, you put quite a bit, well, not quite a bit, about two or three spots there, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, that and was it. It seemed to, I mean, you didn't get the... pestered by bream, did you? No. So I think I'd bugger it. I know they say you're going to get pestered by bream, but. Right. Oh. Good morning, guys. In fact, it's actually probably mid-morning maybe even here at lunch at the moment I haven't actually looked at the time but um from the lack of nighttime footage obviously a uh, quiet night uh carp wise that is at a uh, bream last night and then another one this morning not even decent sized ones and then um, on my left hand rod I was getting some bleeps on it this morning and I thought oh here we go not another bream picked the rod up and as soon as I picked the rod up and started winding you had that horrible grating feeling on the line and uh, yeah, sure enough, as the rig got to the point where whatever it was it was grating on, everything all um, locked up, tried pulling at it from various different angles, nothing was happening, and then eventually after so much of pulling, whatever it was the line was grating on while I was retrieving, snap the line so uh, so yeah so I've just been having to re-rig my left hand rod which is now done uh, Keith hasn't had any action in the night uh, Ginge who I said would be joining us today was hopefully going to be here sort of any time roughly about now unfortunately has um had a bit of an incident with his van shall we say so uh, he's not going to be down to uh, a bit bit more later on now uh, so yeah another absolutely baking hot day just had breakfast delivered to our swims as, as well that was probably about an hour ago fry up delivered to the swim so that was a uh, one good thing about this complex you don't even need to bring any food because breakfast and evening meals if you want it were delivered to your swim so that, that's a nice little bonus but yeah anyway so I'm sticking with the Ronnie rigs because obviously that's what's had the had me fish so far I'll show you the rig, uh, but I'm sure you don't need to see it. Every man and his dog and his gerbil and his chicken have seen a Ronnie rig now. But we have got that two foot of uh, tungsten rig tubing, lead clip system, anti-tangle boom, about nine inches of IQ2 and 20 pounds for the boom. The way I like to set it up with a nice big loop on the end so the the hooking part of it has more movement and then the Ronnie part itself. Like I said, probably don't need to show you this. Every man, dog, chicken, gerbil, guinea pig has seen a Ronnie rig now I think. Right, so I just need to get that back out in the water. We chuck the other two rods as well and some fresh bait. 
might put a bit more bait in as well, seeing I have had a fish, so I've obviously got fish feeding on the area. <laughs> At least a fish anyway. And then uh hopefully try and catch a slightly bigger one. By the way, your ass does look big in them trousers. Oversized waders. We are finally being joined by Ginge. Why, why are you late, Ginge? Had a few mix-ups. Would, would you care to share with the viewers what your little mix-up was? I thought my van ran on both fuels. <laughs> no, it's not a dual fuel van, is it? It's no, a diesel it is, van. It's a diesel van, and I. And put what? It. And what fuel did he put in it? The most expensive fuel I can get. The V power petrol. <laughs> well, let's hope your fishing is better than your uh, your, your fueling um, capabilities. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jim send an old boat out, which I think, to be fair, with the swims we're in, he'll have the advantage because it means he can get right tight to the island which many of the locals have told us it's what you need to do but you can't get tight tight because of the tree canopy and obviously with a boat you can do that so in some places like here a boat comes into its own and that's about as tight as you can get. Nudging your leaves. And the difference between this bait boat and Keith's bait boat is that this one floats. <laughs> Keith calls it a drone and it goes underwater. <laughs> that was my old boat anyway. Yeah, that'd be a bream. Yeah. Yeah, you with a bream master? I might have had a couple, but haven't made the blog. Right now, she told everybody. Well, anyway, um, people, bit of a ginger awareness. When it is sunny, don't do what ginger's done and um, take your top off because you'll probably die. Hold on, I've got a factor 50 on, bugger oh. off. Oh, that's okay. He's got a bandage on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go then, guys. June just probably had his rods out. Hour, hour and a half. Like that, yeah. And as we said, the advantage of having a bait boat and being able to drive it right up to the edge of the island. And he's in already. I'm sorry, Chris, we got a lot to go off in a minute. 
even in the day when the fish don't appear to be doing anything. Yeah, if you could get it out of my swim, please, that would be. Sorry, I'm getting Oh, it's a bream. You're joking. No. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Do you want me to pass you your net? Yes, come on Gilly. You, you can multitask, can't you? No, because I've got to film you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fish. You don't know I'm going to borrow your bait boat now, later on, to get under that tree canopy. It's going to cost you a million pounds. I don't think he's happy. I don't know, have you just loosened off your drag so it looks like it's putting up a better fight? I that from you. <laughs> oh, white pop up as well, I see. Oh no, under your rods. Oh, didn't like the look of your net, did it? Sonic, innit? Needs to be free spirit. Oh, a fox. If it was a fox now, it would have swam straight into it. Well, and you've just doubled the length of my blog with this bit of footage. That's alright then. Oh. No, it definitely doesn't like the look of your net, does it? I think it's you. It sees your three chins and thinks I'm going to eat it. You do look sort of Polish. <laughs> hey! God for that. Hey, and you've beaten Keith already. Well, that ain't hard. <laughs> no. Here we go then, guys. Ginger's first fish. Eleven pound fourteen. A white pop up on a Ronnie rig. Any particular reason why you use that combination? It's just what I added first. Really? Yeah. Not nothing to do with that. So I put mine on yesterday. No, no, I don't look, read what you say. <laughs> and let's you... be fair, this is bigger than yours, so we don't worry about you. <laughs> Lovely little right. fish and a good scrap. I'll get some pictures, get her back. Nice one. If you um, press the middle button on mine, on your phone. Yeah, I accidentally zoomed in onto you then. That's alright. So you is my beauty. <laughs> well then guys, it's uh, early evening time now and um, as you can see the rods aren't out at the moment. Why uh, would that be? Because I've been resting my swim. Don't lie to your viewers. So uh... Why is there a branch missing out of your swim? Because it fell down in the wind. No, there's no, been no wind. <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, I've got to put the rods out. As Ginger's got his bait boat with him, going to utilise it for at least one rod anyway. While the bait boat has got a bit of power, because he's used it all up. 
but uh, as you saw earlier on, Ginger had a fish within about an hour of going tight to the island, so might as well uh, use what you got. And Ginger's got a boat, so I'm going to use it. <laughs> Right then guys, so we have got at least one of my rods nice and tight to the island anyway. About a foot, foot off, foot off the island. A spot I've never been able to reach by casting anyway because of the tree canopy, so... Certainly in these instances, this is where a bait boat certainly comes into its own, so... Uh, Sorted. gang. I was just in the middle of putting my uh, second rod out by the lilies and uh, had a shout from Ginge to tell me he's in and you've only just put this rod out yourself haven't you? Yeah so just back underneath that tree again. Well that must say, tight, tight to the island with a boat. Yeah. So the boat definitely um, in handy. it does. People did say this uh, water was dominated by bait boats getting tight to the islands, and it uh, seems to be quite true, doesn't it? You'll be next if your one goes. <laughs> I hope so. Because I, I can't have you turning up after me and then catching more fish. There you can. <laughs> Where's my gilly?
Right then guys, well I'll leave it there and then I'll, uh, we'll have a look when it's on the map. There we go then guys, once again Jin showing us the advantages of having a bait boat and being able to get tight to that island. What? No, 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 Jin's just a better angler. <sighs> yeah. Well, that's debatable. Yeah. But oh, what's, this, what's this rod been out? 10 minutes? Yeah, 10 minutes. Over in the corner, same as it the first one. Nicely hooked, wasn't it? Yeah. £15.6. <laughs> Little corker. Two fish. Oh, that was fucked. Right. There's the joys of having a nice cradle for them to sit in. Oh. She's not happy with me. No. We, we, we've seen it, so. Nice fish. Yeah, shame about this capital. Oh, shut up. <laughs> right, guys, this third and final rod. The ginger's boat has uh, run out of power now, so we can't utilise it anymore until it's had a bit of charge. So, uh, this middle rod, rather than going to uh, as far as I can with it, casting it, I'm going to um, just go open water. The reason being most of the fish we have seen on top have been kind of about the halfway mark so my, my thinking is if the fish are you know going that way up and down when they're up on the surface in the day they might be that range at night time when they uh when it gets cooler it gets dark and they go back down again so uh so i'm gonna give it a try see what happens Right guys, that's all three rods out now, ready for tonight's uh, effort at catching fish. So I'm trying three different spots this time. Obviously the middle, uh, the left hand one we've, we've seen go tight to the island with Ginger's bait boat. Towards the same area, which I did have yesterday's fish on, so roughly same kind of area. Obviously the one you've just seen open water as I've already explained it's where I've seen most of the fish cruising in the day so theory says that's where they'll be cruising at night when they go back down and then uh, right hand rod inside margin by the lily so um, I mean lily's always a good place to put a rod so it's worth a try well, the rest of it in the hands of the carpy gods. Well, good morning guys. I say good morning, it's actually probably nearer lunchtime now and um, apart from a, a couple of bream for uh, me and Ginger in the night, not much has happened. In fact, nothing has happened. Still plenty of fish up there, we can see them, but this heat has just got them, just, they're just cruising and sunbathing. But they don't look like they're interested in feeding one little bit. Oh yeah, sun's high in the sky, baking hot again already. And like I said, it's, it's just not making it great for uh, fishing conditions at all. And I'm sure some of you will might comment in the video why don't you try and float with all zigs? After chatting to quite a few of the locals, nearly all of them have said for some reason zig rigs just don't work on this venue. And we have chucked out some floaters and they're just not even looking at them, so So that's why before we start commenting. But anyway, still got a few hours fishing ahead of us yet. Not giving up just yet. But yeah, being a big fan hasn't been a blank for me, but I've been a bit quiet. Please, huh? 
come to the end of the video now. No, Jim just come to the end of his session. He's all packed up and ready to go. Me and Keith are sticking out for a couple more hours yet, but the way the conditions have been, we can't really see uh, anything happening else, to be fair. So I'm um, going to make it the end of the video now before Ginge goes. But uh, Ginge is victorious. Bought more of those fish. Makes a change, doesn't it? Hey, shut up. <laughs> so uh, I've not blanked, but it hasn't, hasn't been the most productive session, but I haven't blanked. I have. <laughs> so, uh, well, might as well. I don't think there's a case yeah, anymore now. Keith is blanking and it looks like it's going to be a blank. So um, I think really we've got the conditions to blame for being in a, quite a slow session. I mean, it's, it's, it, the fish really have, haven't been interested whatsoever. They've, they've been in front of us, but just sunbathing and cruising. So uh, it's sort safe. of like what Keith's done. Yeah, but he, he's normally cruising in car parks, so... Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but anyway, right, uh, if you have watched right to the end, thanks for watching. Um, my next session will be hopefully a good one, which will be the annual YouTube Blogger Social at uh, Nash's Royston Lakes. You can get but, some new dot spawns and stuff like that? Right? Yeah, I'm going to top up on my tackle. Yeah, I think you want to, especially the spawns. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Till next time, tight lines.